Hello everyone and welcome back to Activism Uncensored. On today's episode we're going to be bringing you a bit of an update since our video about the Not My Bill demo. As you know, that featured uh, Morgan and Marcus, who we've spoken about a few times before on the podcast. Now, since we released that video, there's been a bit of an update um, with Marcus Decker's case. Uh, the Home Secretary and the Home Office are basically trying to deport Marcus. After he served his sentence here in the UK, they want him to return to Germany, which is something that he really doesn't want to do. He's got a family here, he's got uh, stepchildren, and uh, just the fact that he's been given such a long sentence is uh, unbelievable in the first place, let alone uh, having to face being separated from his family once he's been through that. And, and just remember as well that Morgan and Marcus as activists have received the longest sentences ever for taking uh, action on climate change. So several organisations met at Parliament Square in London on Saturday the 24th of uh, June this year. It was also great to see the Julian Assange campaign who were out there in force with their own separate demonstration but also uh, did a show of solidarity. Uh, with the Don't Deport Marcus demonstration as well. That was brilliant to see. Uh, you're going to see some clips of that coming up, including Holly, who's Marcus's uh, partner. First of all, we're going to take a look back at an interview that I did with Marcus while he was still on remand in uh, Chelmsford during December of last year. Let's take a listen. Okay, so this week I'm joined by Marcus, who was on the QE2 Dartford Bridge earlier on in the year, which you will have seen in the news. Um, he's currently a uh, prison in Chelmsford, uh, but I'm very lucky to be able to speak with him this evening. Marcus, how are you doing? Hello there. Thanks for having me. I'm doing very well. Thank you. Well, you're very welcome. It's really good to have you on, and uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, fantastic. Marcus, first of all, I want to talk about you, your journey through your first sort of involvement with political activism, which led you up to um, your actions on the Dartford Bridge. If, if you could um, just take us through um, what it was in your sort of political activism life that sort of led you up to that point. And the yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I was always interested in in nature and um, I, I spent a lot of time in the forest as a kid um, and eventually I found out that you know I, I really want to help the world you know I, I learned about climate change in school like ages ago um, and and so I got involved with Greenpeace when I was in uni and um, that was my first you know steps into activism did some climbing actions which was quite exciting uh, after a bunch of training and and just helped um, a lot of youth as well getting involved at the time and then there was a few years in my life where I didn't really engage but over time I kept hearing about these dire moments of science and and then I learned about you know tipping points in the climate system and self-reinforcing feedback loops so I, I was like I've got to get involved again and do something and so Extinction Rebellion was born in 2018 and um, I just happened to stumble across the people in my town where I was living at the time that were just forming a group after watching the Heading for Extinction and What to Do About It talk, which was really amazing. So I got involved straight away and as a musician brought the music from day one. Uh, I tried to learn activist songs and earth songs and regenerative yeah. stuff and rousing stuff. And um, yeah, and then it continued on with climbing and singing and building tree houses in HS2 camps and... Um, and singing in the uh, in the Houses of Parliaments this year. I mean, and then obviously the QE2 bridge. There's endless things I could list, but it's been a fantastic journey and um, wonderful people along the way, and hopefully we've achieved something. Yeah, um, obviously you, you're well renowned for your, your musical abilities and uh, singing in um, in tandem with your amazing activism. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, uh, I was just going to go on to so actually the the efficacy of your actions, we've recently seen that banks such as HSBC have stopped their funding for future fossil fuel projects um, and other banks is coming into the fray as well, so how do you feel about that? Uh, it's it's wicked, I mean I, I've been in prison now for I think 64 days or so and 
you know, every time I get an email with an update like this, you know, that, that some something big is changing on the outside, either some celebrities have come around and spoken out in our favor and our support or, or you know, like banks tra- transitioning away from these destructive fossil fuels, it, it, it makes such a huge difference while, while we're in here, but, you know, isolated from the news. And, and especially thinking that, you know, I was involved in singing at the HSBC AGM earlier this year, I think it was in April, where we sang uh, money, money, money. <laughs> it must be fun. It's got me in HSBC's world, right? So <laughs> we, we had, a, had a good look at those CEOs and, and it's so great that they finally got the message and making the change now. Oh, that's brilliant. I'm looking forward into 2023. Would you like to see more sort of civil disobedience um, and uh, the kind of things that Just Stop Oil have been doing this year going forward? Is that the kind of thing that you'd hope for people to get involved with? Absolutely. It's unfortunately so necessary now that we have to sort of break the law to push the boundaries, push the Overton window, get the conversation out there, get more people talking about it and get most of all pressure onto the political system because they are the ones that really urgently need to make those drastic changes for us to have a livable planet and get away from their genocidal behavior that they're currently pushing. So yeah, we need we need more people to get involved and, and stay creative and, and, and come up with you know, interesting ways to make a change. It really is, yeah. And how do you feel about the recent changes in the law, for example, with the uh, police crime sentencing bill um, that Suella Braverman is uh, mm. trying to get through? Um, how, how do you feel about this sort of reaction to the things that Just Stop All have been doing? Yeah, well, it's, it seems to be the stereotypical thing that the Tories are up to at the moment. I mean, it's not just us. If you look at strikes happening all across society now at the moment, and and the government's response seems to be everywhere that rather than actually addressing the problem and fixing our healthcare system or fixing any of the crisis that we currently find ourselves in, instead they just want to forbid people to um, to do strike action or to to get on the roads, as you said, the police crime sensing courts bill our offence, as they call it, you know, public nuisance is now under the new law that um, Pretty Patel and Suella Breverman have cha- changed. Yeah. Um, and, and so all they're trying to do is to scare us. The, recently in a, in a sentencing that uh, just the world activist got, the judge even said that, that the, you know, it's particularly high sentence just to scare other activists from doing. But if you think about it, that makes no sense because we're obviously you know, desperate to get this change. And, and so we're, we're already willing to sit there in the road and, and we're going to be glued on so we're not, like, escaping uh, punishment. So so it, it, there, there is no difference whether that punishment is going to be harder or not. Like, this is us fighting for all life on, on this planet and, and all the future. So, you know, the laws are not going to make a difference. And if they keep calling us names, like Swella Braverman called us tofu-eating karate when we were up that bridge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With her funny new words that she created. Um, that's not going to make a change. We'll, we'll keep, we'll, we need to continue our activism because all life depends on it. So um, hopefully we're going to, yeah, make a change. Yeah, it's, it's right. Uh, you're absolutely correct there. What other choice do we have otherwise, to, you know, to uh, create the political will ourselves if we're not politically represented? And not only are we not politically resent, uh, represented, our politicians are actually acting against us and therefore against the sensible things that need to be do, done to preserve the future of humanity, basically. Um, yeah. And all I can do is um, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart and a lot of other people's hearts for your actions and um, for the sacrifices that you've that you've made in in what everybody rightly um, considers to be an unjust reaction um, to a proportionate response to global warming and climate change. Um, and there are a lot of people out there who just want to pass on. Uh, the best sentiments of solidarity um, and love and we can't wait to see you soon uh, of course Marcus, thank you very much um, thank you so much Elvis. today um, so, um, obviously since then Marcus along with Morgan uh, went to trial and, and were unfortunately found guilty and then later sentenced to two years seven months and three years respectively uh, we're going to take a look now at the don't deport Marcus March um, since the news came out about his deportation. Thank <laughs> you.
So we're going to march to the Home Office and when we get there I think there are going to be some other speeches and I might speak again and then Marcus is going to phone us from prison so that you can hear him speak and I think he's got some things to say as well. So that's in 40 minutes. Can we get to the Home Office in 40 minutes? Yes. Yes? Okay, let's get moving. Here we are outside the Home Office in London. And it's a very uh, special march today, dedicated to our friend Marcus Decker, who's been threatened with deportation uh, to Germany. He was sentenced to two years and seven months for climbing the QE2 Dartford Bridge uh, last year, in October. Uh, and now the Home Office wants to deport him uh, over to Germany, where he's from originally. So, Just Stop Oil, Extinction Rebellion, uh, Black Lives Matter and the Julian Assange campaign have come together today in solidarity um, also with Julian Assange's case uh, because Marcus and Julian are both basically political prisoners and we really can't have a just society where we see cases like this happening so we'll show you support. Can you hear me? Yes! Great. Change is coming, we are few but we are strong. Time's been wasted and we haven't got too long. Mother's dying, we can feel it in our bones. So we're rebelling on a system that is wrong. Change is coming, we are few but we are strong. Time's been wasted and we haven't got too long. Mother's dying, we can feel it in our bones. So we're rebelling on a system that is wrong. So we're rebelling on a system that is wrong. Hello, everybody. I'm um, so grateful to hear you all. Thank you so much for coming out. It's, um, it's Marcus here from High Point Prison, day 248. Day 248 um, of being in prison, that's 35 weeks already, or eight months, eight months of, eight months of being separated from my love Holly and her lovely children, Laurie and Rosa, and of course my wonderful community, all of you, which is, um, which is very painful. And um, as you know, uh, the last few weeks and couple months have been very, very difficult because of the distress of the potential deportation, which is, of course, why you're all here. Um, however, the, the march today, you know, it, it's so wonderful to think you've, you've all come out for me. Thank you so much. Um, we, we do know, however, that the, the outcome of the deportation cannot be changed by this march. However, it, it is an, an, an expression of solidarity um, of, your, of all of you for my, uh, in support for my action. And, and at the same time, it is an expression of solidarity of myself um, in support of all your actions. Um, because it's, it's the same thing on the other, on the other side. So, so I want to express my, my, my gratitude to you all for coming here. I, I want to express my gratitude for for being alive, for, for life itself, which is best represented in my little prison cell here by, by the little plants and seedlings I have, which give me so much joy. I've got um, three little apples, apple trees that are about as tall as my hand is wide and about a dozen little sunflowers and, and a tomato plant which has grown taller than my arm is long already, which I get so much joy from. Um, I also want to just be grateful for the interconnectedness of everything, um, which is obviously expressed in community and support. So, so thank you so much for all the support that I've received here in prison through, through the emails and postcards and everything that you guys have done. But also I'm grateful for all the support that I've been able to give because of the support of you to the people around me here, many of whom 
have it so much more difficult than me and have, have got years and years of sentences to spend. But I'd like to ask you to allow, allow me to, to honor my pain um, today here with you um, because, because being in captivity, being in prison means we're shielded from the outside world to a degree. As you might know, we, we have a TV in each of the cells and, and I get emails printed out um, so, so please keep sending them. That's really much appreciate, appreciated. But through those, you know, I, I was able to hear about, for example, the release of the final synthesis of the sixth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, in March. Um, and, and, you know, to hear how devastating it was, their, their message that they once again spread. And yet I was shocked you know, to, to see that it was only for one day that it was on TV um, that we were able to, to follow this very important news, which I believe should be talked about every single day, um, what it means um, to, to hear the, the top scientists. And, and, and I was shocked to later find out that the, that the original requirements in the report to phase out all fossil fuels and the requirements um, for more plant-based diets were not included um, in the final report, even though that they were in the leaked drafts that um, were leaked beforehand. So um, when I think of how we'll very soon pass one and a half degrees, I, I, feel, I feel despair. Because, because I know one and a half degrees, even though it's just such a small number, represents untold suffering, untold human suffering, unprecedented. It represents losing so many species forever, and it represents the ever-growing risk of passing more tipping points out of the global stability that our world has known for thousands of generations. So I want to acknowledge my grief and this heavy sadness that, that regularly brings tears to my eyes when I, when I picture what an ice-free Arctic might look like for the first time and the consequences for people and life on this planet. And when I think about the children of Tuvalu um, who are leaving their land on, on mass because salt water is destroying their nation and their culture and they will be totally lost as a people. And, and, the, and the grief and sadness, I want to acknowledge that um, when, when, when I think of all the wildfires across the world, um, the, the one billion animals and, and creatures, wonderful creatures that died in in Australia, the, you know, you might want to think of the koalas and the kangaroos and the wonderful animals there, the butterflies, and then think how many one billion are. So um, maybe you want to just close your eyes for a moment to, to picture that suffering, which, which I'm trying to hold in this secluded environment here in, um, in prison. But, but I want to tell you a story. I want to, I want to tell you about how... Um, how I've known about these detrimental effects of climate breakdown for a very long time, and I've known about the detrimental effects, effects of flying. So before, before coming to the UK, I was, was traveling a lot, and I, I even managed, I, I traveled far, you know, without flying. I even managed to travel all the way to the United States without flying, just by hitchhiking and helping on a small sailing boat, going from Gibraltar to the Caribbean and so forth. So there's all this travel possible is what I'm trying to say. I, I have flown much too much in my life, of course, don't get me wrong. But every year that, the, the, that passes, the situation is getting worse and worse and the effects of flying are less and less acceptable. So it was very hard for me to hear after, after years of, of trying a myriad of ways of taking climate action myself and then of course climbing the Dartford Crossing with Morgan and, and hanging a, a, a banner, you know, as, a, as an emergency cry, you know, like, in, like a fire alarm to, to shout this message so important to, to be annoying but hopefully save lives in the, in the bigger picture. I ended up in prison, of course, as you know, and, and it was very painful to hear in this um, very restricted environment when, when I spoke to my mother a couple of months ago, um, my mother, whom I really loved, that, that she was flying. She was flying on an all-inclusive holiday with her partner in Kenya. And that's a very difficult situation um, 
to, to take in. And so I've had to have um, a few very difficult conversations with her about the situation that we're in and, and what a crisis response really looks like. And, and yes, of course, we have to address the system as itself, that the system change is key, the fossil fuel executives, of course. But we in ourselves become symbols in our communities when we, when we, for example, take that step and say flying is, has become unacceptable, we cannot do it anymore. Um, then others will see that. And um, if, if you have people that say, oh, the plane will take off anyway, then, then um, you, you, you've got to explain to them about, you know, fewer, many and many people, many more people um, taking that step now. So new airports in this country just simply won't be built because there's less demand and airports won't be expanded. So, so what about to, to those families that, that are still flying because they have family members abroad uh, and then they say that their families are torn apart? Well, to those, we've got, we've got to point out that so many families are torn apart that haven't even ever had the chance to fly at all. And 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 what about those, you know, whose whole homelands are being washed away because of the consequences or people dying all over the place and droughts and so forth. So um, this is this is what I wanted to tell you about the situation. I hope that you were able to connect with some of the the things I've been able to say and. And the fact of the matter is that our societies will have to change beyond recognition and that we are deluded if we think that we don't need to change for that to happen. So my question to you today is, what is your emergency response? What, what is it that you are going to change in this crisis? And um, that keeps bringing me back to the, to the sentence, to tell the truth and act as if the truth was real. Um, which I came back to in my trial a lot um, in court to be able to speak to a jury and, and to really explain the action that we took. And that all really felt like acting as if the truth was real. And of course, I'm continuing that here in prison in lots of conversations that I have every day and with you now today. So thanks again so much for, for coming here today. I'd, I'd like to leave you with that question. Um, what your emergency response is. So if I could ask you that favor to, to turn to someone that, that's near you that you might not know so very well yet and, and just speak to them for three minutes each um, about that question. What's your emergency response? And, and if you're listening first, then maybe you can ask the person, could you do more? Yeah, that would be my wish for you for today. So I'll leave you with that. Thank you so much for listening and for coming out and for supporting me and my family in, in this very difficult time. Um, I wish you love, lots, of, lots of love and rage and um, please someone at the mic, tell them to swap in three minutes. <laughs> All the best. stand up in my own life in 2019 and I thought fuck this shit I'm standing up for my life and my kids life yeah I want to say a few words the hostile environment and punishments now being meted out to Western activists engaged in non-violent direct action is something the earth protectors and indigenous peoples of the global south have been experienced for centuries. In their stand to protect and preserve their homes and culture, the forest, rivers and seas, against the multinational corporations engaged in extracting all the wealth, leaving a degraded and polluted environment, thousands have been killed. Let's honor the Windrush generation 75 years this weekend, 
who came at our government's request to build a, a war-torn Britain, and who decades later, many of whom faced the intolerable stress and years of struggles to overturn bogus deportation orders. Let's remember that their, that their descendants still don't have a level, play, level playing field and have poorer health outcomes, educational opportunities and racist tr treatment at the self-defined racist, sexist, homophobic and misogynistic bunch called the Met Police. Yeah. Right. Woo. Let's not forget the dawn immigration raids of hostels housing migrants and the expulsion of people who, because of their sexuality, political or religious beliefs, will be harshly treated, imprisoned, even killed by the countries from which they fleed. Let's not forget the British solution is to export our own asylum seekers to camps in Rwanda. In the past few days, what better proof that rich lives matter more when a military-style million-dollar operation was launched. And yet, year after year, migrant dinghies, dinghies are watched by European powers as they crumple, collapse and sink with the incalculable loss of life. The Mediterranean is a graveyard. And let's think, already we're hearing, it was the ego of the white man who thought he could go against nature, not even get his sub certified because he knew best that got those poor lives lost. While we campaign for Marcus's deportation to be staved, Let's use this opportunity to, to connect with these injustices, educate ourselves, and elevate the voices of the unheard. We need to stop oil and we need system change. I urge all citizens of conscience to step up and choose a side. I choose life, I choose hope. Best of luck, Marcus. Thanks very much, Robin. I just forgot that my mum and my sister are here, and my mum wrote this song especially for Earth Day last year, and would really like to sing it for you. It's going to. It's an absolute opposite mood of what you just heard, which is fine. I thought we'll just like have that amazing up, and now we're just going to bring you back down to Earth and um, sing you a song called Restore Our Earth. My sister Flo and my mum Sally.
Thank you. Uh, we're here on Whitehall now. Uh, we've left the Home Office after the speeches and uh, we're going to go as far at Whitehall as we can all the way to Trafalgar Square. Marcus March and I also just want to say a special thanks to all the organisations who were involved with uh, getting the event together. It was brilliant to see everybody there. It's also really important for you guys at home to sign the petition. I'm going to put a link in the description and that is the petition which hopefully if we get enough uh, numbers will raise the issue of Marcus's deportation in Parliament. So please if you can follow the link and sign the petition. Uh, just before we go, we're going to hear again uh, from Marcus at the end of my chat with him while he was on remand last year. Uh, he did a little song outro for us, so we're going to hear that now. Let's uh, take it away, Marcus. If you could, Much um, appreciated. If you could um, do us the honour of giving us a verse and a chorus of a song to see us out, would that be okay? Absolutely, oh, yeah. fantastic. I, I think I'll... I'll um... I'll choose my my go-to piece again, which I which I really like singing because it applies to so many different um, aspects of it. Which goes, um, we are the tongue that speaks the truth. We are the song upon the wind. We are the courage to stand forth. We are the change that now begins. On this God green earth, we will take a stand with an open heart and a healing hand. With an open heart and a healing hand. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Marcus. Thanks for talking to me. Likewise. Thank you so much for having me, my friend. And fingers crossed for you in January, my friend. Absolutely. Okay. Cheers. Love and solidarity, brother. Thank you. Bye-bye. Talk to you soon. Good night. So that's it for this episode, and uh, really hope that you'll like and subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. There's also a link in the description for our Patreon channel if you want to help to uh, support us. That would be really, really appreciated. So until next time, I'll see you later. We are that tongue that speaks the truth. We are the song upon the wind. We are the courage to stand forth. We are the change that now begins. On this good green earth, we will take a stand with an open heart and a healing hand. With an open heart and a healing hand.